Hello! Today we are going to discuss Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Sir Isaac Newton was one of the most influential men in human history. He was born in January of 1643, died at the ripe old age of 84 in 1727, and was confounded by bullies his whole life. Many people think Isaac Newton was hit in the head with an apple. He was not, in fact, hit in the head with an apple, or he probably was at some point because he hung around apple trees, but not the famous time when he thought about gravity and invented gravity. But he did see an apple fall to the ground and he got to thinking, why does an apple fall straight down? Why not to the side? After the apple fell, Newton noticed the giant moon rising up over the trees. So he also wondered why the moon didn't come crashing down like an enormous apple from a very tall tree. Centrifugal force. Newton noticed that when kids play Ring Around the Rosie, they lean back. He also understood that if you tie a person to a rope and spin them around in a circle really fast, they will feel pulled away from the center. This is called centrifugal force. It's what keeps you plastered to the wall of that terrible carnival ride that makes you sick to your stomach. Mr. Newton figured out the formula for centrifugal force. It looks like this. If we continue with Newton's suspicious person on a rope example, then M, mass, stands for the size of the person being swung, D, distance, stands for the length of the rope, and T, time, stands for how long it takes to do one revolution. So if you have a large person or object swinging around by a long rope very quickly, you'll have a much greater centrifugal force than a small person on a short rope swinging around slowly. Next, we have the inverse square law. Now this law, there's a little bit of a contention because some guy named Hook said that he thought it up, but Newton said he thought it up first, but just didn't show it to anybody. So I, you can make up your own mind. But the inverse square law goes like this. It states, the Earth's gravitational pull weakens the farther away an object moves from Earth, and it weakens with the square of the distance. So this means that an apple two times as far away from Earth would feel one-fourth the pull, and an apple three times away would feel one-ninth the pull. And now we're at the big show. Isaac Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Okay, so we've got centrifugal force with Isaac Newton spinning his girlfriends on ropes. And we've got the inverse square law about the Earth's pull getting lighter as we move away. Now, let us turn our attention to gravity. When we think of an apple crashing to Earth, we always picture it as the apple getting sucked down by Earth's gravity. Newton decided this wasn't exactly the case. In his mind, the apple and Earth are attracted to one another and racing toward each other like mad lovers. He says that if we could whittle Earth down to a tiny speck at its center and whittle an apple down to the same size speck, they would rush right into each other. It only appears that the apple is attracted to Earth because the Earth is ginormous and the apple is apple-sized. So, any object in the universe is attracted to any other object in the universe. And the attraction is weakened as distance increases, but it never fully ceases. Let's take a look at Newton's famous equation for all this. The F is Earth's gravitational force. And that equals big G, Newton's gravitational constant, times big M, Earth's mass, times little m, the apple's mass, divided by D, distance squared. Ta-da! Knighthood, please. Newton is great. So to answer some of Newton's questions, why does an apple fall straight down? Because the center of an apple and the center of the Earth cannot contain themselves and must be together. And why doesn't the moon crash into Earth like a very giant apple? It's because of a delicate tug of war between the Earth's gravitational pull and the moon's centrifugal force. The moon cannot move out of its orbit. Imagine an invisible rope from the moon to the Earth, chaining her in place. She can't spin off into the heavens because the Earth keeps pulling her back, but she can't crash into Earth because of her own centrifugal force. Now, you may look at the equation and say, how can something so immensely important as gravity be summed up so simply? I'll tell you, it can't. This is all a bit misleading. That cute big G is a deceitful little guy. 
and hides all the complexity you'd expect when talking about the Earth and gravity and the moon and things. G equals blah, 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 I'm already asleep. I don't even know how to say it. That's how smart Newton was. Anyhow, Newton was correct, and his work allowed us to go to the moon and back and do all sorts of cool things. However, it wasn't as correct as it could have been. Albert Einstein was able to fill in the holes, though, with his theory of relativity and all that mystical weirdo stuff that I, kind of freaks me out. But nobody's knocking it. Newton's law is really good enough for most applications. So there you have it. Isaac Newton started off plagued by bullies, invented calculus, never married but often talked of women being swung around by ropes, figured out gravity, and ultimately his tomb ended up in the Da Vinci Code. Quite the illustrious life. And we thank you, Sir Isaac. And we thank you, dear viewer, for spending some time with us and learning about all the things we just learned about.